British contribution to the outbreak of the war. With the Peace Treaty of 1919, England made its first disastrous contribution towards the likelihood that the next war would follow soon. The British government, in conjunction with the other victorious Allied powers, constructed a new variant of its balance of power politics in Europe, which was based on the intention of keeping a long-term conflict among Germany, Czechoslovakia and Poland on the boil. Especially Danzig and the so-called Polish Corridor were someday to lead to new conflicts. New wars, therefore, were in sight. This was even recognized in England, France, and in the United States of America. Here you see red framed the free state of Danzig, and blue framed the war gains of Poland. The small blue framed link from West Prussia in the center to the Baltic Sea in the north was the new connection from the Polish mainland to the Baltic Sea, the so-called Polish Corridor. Back to the comments. Churchill said on 24th November 1932 in a speech to the House of Commons, if the British government really wishes to promote peace, then it should take the initiative and reopen the issue of Danzig and the Corridor. If these matters are not resolved, there can be no hope for a lasting peace. And the US President Hoover, who was in office before Hitler's time, wrote in his memoirs that he and the French Prime Minister Laval agreed during the latter state visit in the United States that Danzig should be given back to Germany and that the Polish corridor between East Prussia and Germany should be pruned back to the necessary minimum. However, England failed to eliminate the disruptive factors created in Versailles. Britain let the Mamel question slide, let the Danzig and the Corridor problem continue, and left the armament questions unresolved. Britain ignored the hardship of the minorities in Poland, in France, and in Czechoslovakia. She took no notice of Austria's desire for union with Germany, and she tolerated France's demand that Germany's border should be remain permanently unprotected. In the Sudeten crisis, England for the first time endeavored in earnest to repair some of the damage done in Versailles. But with the annexation of Rump, Czechia, Hitler then went too far. England used the situation so created to construct for Germany on the Danzig problem an obstacle at which the latter must stop or jump. The British government offered the Polish government a guarantee against Germany, although Germany had not yet even threatened Poland, and although Poland and Germany were confederates at the time. At that time, German government was negotiating with the Polish government for the return of Danzig and the construction of an ex-territorial transport link between East Prussia and the German mainland through the corridor. It offered in exchange the recognition of the Polish territorial games of 1918 and the preservation of the Polish economic and port privileges in Danzig. Poland had the opportunity to reach a negotiated agreement with Germany, but broke off negotiations after London's guarantee of March 1939. Had, uh, 39. 
It was a tongue twister for me. Had virtually removed any reason for Warsaw to respond positively to Berlin's proposals. Poland changed thy sides after that. Britain's last and very direct contribution to the outbreak of the war was the double dealing with which the British government at the end strung along the German government. Thereby, the British Prime Minister Chamberlain gave Hitler the impression he were interested in a German-British alliance, which was untrue, and that he wanted to play the fair broker between Poland and Germany. However, at the same time, Foreign Minister Halifax, that ambassador, cannot in Warsaw convey the advice to the Polish government that one would only demand talks from the Poles, but no concessions. Even in relying the venue and the date of such negotiations, the British initially left the German in the false belief that they had recommended the German conditions for the talks to the Poles. So, at five minutes before 12, they played for time until Hitler acted and opened the war. The British government managed cleverly to feign the role of mediator and seemingly to pursue the course of peace. Thus, it could enter into the war with a clean slate. On 3rd September 1939, Great Britain declared war on Germany, well knowing that she wouldn't have the slightest chance to support Poland. 